Ciao, I'm Marianne Esposito. Today on Ciao Italia, two classic pasta dishes from southern Italy. What does la Genovese mean to you? If I told you that we were going to make a Neapolitan sauce today to go with pasta, you would probably think, oh, it's going to be a tomato sauce made with plum tomatoes, right? Wrong. Even though that is a really important Neapolitan sauce, today we're actually going to make something called la Genovese. And la Genovese, if you know something about Italy, would say to you, well, that's from Genoa, isn't it? Genovese? No, it's really a Neapolitan sauce that has that name. And it starts with meat. So, let me show you what I have here, well wrapped from the butcher. So to do it, you wanna start out with a chuck roast, about three pounds or so of a good looking chuck roast. Ooh, and that is a good looking one. So let me get that out, put it right there. That's about three pounds of chuck roast that's been tied with kitchen string. So when you buy a chuck roast, you know, you're buying something that comes from the shoulder area. So this is the kind of meat that, you know, takes a little while to cook. It's, this isn't something you just put in the oven and roast like a standing rib roast. This is something that is good for braising or stewing. So once you uh, get your roast home for the Genovese, you want to dry it off really well with some paper towels. And do this on a meat tray. You can buy these plastic meat trays anywhere in a kitchen store, in your grocery store. But you really want to dry the meat well because you're going to salt and pepper this very heavily. Okay. That looks good. Let me get rid of this. And now we have to get our hands into this. So I'm going to get some pepper. It's better to use a good cracked pepper. You really want to generously pepper the meat. But you have to have good flavor. And a chuck roast really is a delicious cut of meat because there's a lot of fat in it, and that's important. That's where the flavor is. So a generous amount of salt over the top. And then you just rub it all over. Really massage that into the meat on all sides. Get it everywhere, salt and pepper. I just wipe up the plastic with it so that it's all over the meat. Then once you do that, once you have salt and pepper everywhere, then you want to wash your hands. But first you want to put this in some olive oil. So I've got some olive oil going on the stove in a little bit of, uh, in a big heavy duty Dutch oven. And I'm going to put the meat in with some pancetta. So here we have some pancetta. And you know that as unsmoked bacon. So here it is in the slice, and here it is already diced. So you need about a quarter of a pound of this. So I'm going to take this right here on my board and just cut this piece up. This is going to add extra flavor to the roast as it's cooking. This, this roast is going to take about two and a half hours to cook. Okay, let's add that to our bowl. So that's a quarter of a pound. This is a three pound roast. Let me wash my hands first before I take that lid off. Always wash your hands when you're dealing with raw meat, chicken, whatever it is. You always want to clean your hands so that you're not contaminating everything. All right, so let me see. Let me take the top off of my pot here. So I can see that the oil is shimmering a little bit, so I'm going to take the roast and stick it right in there. 
and let it brown, and I'm going to add the pancetta with it. So you put the pancetta around the roast and let that get brown with it. Now this, this is the part that is going to take some time to brown. You want to spend about 10 minutes of your Cucina investment time making sure that the roast is nicely browned all over. So you don't want to hurry this process. So I would say that all in all, this is going to take at least 10 minutes to brown on all sides, even standing the roast up end to end. 10 minutes later, we're ready to add the rest of the ingredients. So what else goes with the Genovese? Well, you need some Liodori, as the Italians call it, which would be the flavoring agents like carrots and celery, which we're going to put in, diced. So here are carrots and here are, is celery. And guess what? There are no tomatoes in this sauce. Did I tell you that? Right. This is a tomato-free zone right now. But we got to have more than just that. So yes, we have onions. Now, I like to use Vidalia onions for this. They're a much milder onion. And for this sauce, you need a lot of onions. I mean, if you really like onions, you need this much. See? That's about four pounds of onions that are going in to this sauce. You heard me right, four pounds, because this is really going to cook down. So <clears throat> I've cried a lot in my day but not as much as I cry with onions. And believe me, this is a sacrificial recipe made for you today because I really, really have to wear glasses and a mask in order to do this. Okay, well anyway, so now you know. So I would say four large Vidalias will give you four pounds of sliced onions. So we have our onions. So we have to wait <clears throat> until our, our meat is cooked down a little bit before we can add the onions. And then with it, we're going to add, excuse me, some red wine. So any red wine that you like to drink is perfect uh, for this dish. So some red wine. And the beauty of this dish is that the meat, the pot roast, is served as a second course, which is very traditional in the way an Italian meal is planned. And what do we do with the onion sauce? That is going to go over some pasta, like ziti, penne, a shortcut of pasta, whatever shortcut of pasta you would like to use. Today I'm using a chickpea pasta, which you can find in your grocery store. So now that you know that, I need to go back and check on that meat. All right, I'm going to give this a turn just to see where we are. And you see we're getting a little color there on the back side of the meat. And, and you know, that took about three or four minutes. So now three or four minutes on this side and then we'll have to come back and do the uh, ends as well. Now we're gonna add the celery and the carrot around the meat. and the onions. So we got to get them in packed around and on top. And you know, this looks like a lot, but believe me, this is all going to cook down into a sauce that's going to be delicious served over ziti. Now the whole idea of the Genovese, the name the Genovese, came from Genoa. It actually did come from Genoa from sailors who would go to Naples or merchants who would go to Naples and they would like to have, you know, the foods that they were used to, but they couldn't, so they had to eat kind of Neapolitan food. So they improvised and they made this kind of a sauce with onions and carrots and meat and they called it La Genovese because these were the merchants and the sailors who had come from uh, northern Italy. 
So I know what you're thinking. She is never going to get all those onions in that pan, but they are going to cook down. So we let them put them in a little at a time here until we can get all of them in. And then we're going to add some wine. Let's see how that mass of onions is doing. Well, they're doing nicely. You see how they have really cooked down. Oh, ye of little faith. Now we can add the rest of them, all those onions. Four pounds go in. And then the only other thing we have to add to this is some wine. So I'm going to raise the heat just a bit here and add about three quarters of a cup of red wine around. That's about three quarters of a cup. And we just want that to kind of evaporate for a few minutes. So once you do that, well then you just put the lid on and you let it go for about two and a half hours or until you can stick a fork in there and it's really, really tender. Now remember, this is going to be our second course because the sauce the onion sauce, we're going to serve over ziti, which will be our first course. All right, so cover the pot, lower the heat to simmer. Next up, spaghetti alla puttanesca. So spaghetti alla puttanesca is really a very popular dish in southern Italy, and there are many versions of it. And this is tomato-based. So you can use a variety of tomatoes. Now here we have, of course, the DOP. Pomodori uh, San Marzano, and you'll recognize that they are from San Marzano by the DOP indication, which means denominazione origine protetta, which means that these plum tomatoes can only be grown in San Marzano, and they are certified by the European Union. You see that label right there? So you always look for that. And when you get, get them, they are always whole. See, look. They're whole tomatoes. They're never chopped. And the way my Nona Galasso used to do this was to take these when she was ready to make just a simple tomato sauce, get the olive oil, garlic going, and then she'd take these by hand and just smush them into the pan. So you can use those any time of the year. But in the summertime, I like to use fresh tomatoes. So cherry tomatoes are a good, a good uh, choice for this recipe. So if you have them in your garden, that would be great. So we're going to use cherry tomatoes today for this recipe. But the kicker, and I mean the kicker, for this recipe is right here. And this is hot red pepper paste. See? And that's where the name puttanesca comes from, meaning kind of, you know, ladies of the night thing. So this is very, very hot. And this is red pepper paste that I made from chili peppers from my own garden. So you can get that recipe on chowitalia.com. Then we need some... We need some anchovy paste in this. We need some tomato paste. We need capers. We have black olives, green olives, garlic. Later, we're going to put in some wine. So let's get started. I'm going to chop up the uh, uh, olives first. So whatever you can find, uh, cherignola, uh, niswas, if you don't want to use uh, uh, cherignola, you can use black, Sicilian olives, and they are they are slippery, so just give them a rough chop. This is one of my favorite sauces for pasta. And we're just going to put this over spaghetti. I'm going to just give them a really rough chop, keep some texture here. OK, that's, that's good enough. So I'm going to put them back in the bowl. And did I tell you we have capers with this as well? That's going to give a little kind of bitter taste. So we have the two olives, the green and the black. Then we're going to need some garlic, of course. So a couple cloves of garlic. Smash it down. And when I eat this dish, I have a big glass of something. Well, I have red wine with it because there's red wine in the dish. But if you really you know, don't like hot, you better have something dairy next to you because that's going to take away the hotness. But you can make this as, as hot or as, or as mild as you want it to be. So there is the garlic. So we're going to put that in there. 
And we also have some flat leaf Italian parsley here and now the tomatoes. So for the tomatoes, for the cherry tomatoes, you just want to cut them in half. See? And I'm always telling you, you need to get a knife like this. I like to use it for certain kinds of soft breads too. Also for angel food cake, for sponge cakes, it's good. And if we were in the Naples area, of course, these cherry tomatoes would be just as sweet as sugar. So you want to use really, really ripe cherry tomatoes. And these are just going to cook down in the pans. Very quick sauce. We're going to be able to make this in about, once you have everything ready, about 10 to 15 minutes. So there are our cherry tomatoes. And now we want to get some olive oil going in a saute pan, in a saute pan that's large enough to also hold the pasta when it's cooked. Got to wash my hands. All right, we've got a couple tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil in this pan. I'm going to add my garlic. Get that going, but don't want to burn it. And with it, a tablespoon or so of tomato paste goes in. Smells really great. Tomato I, w and anchovy go together beautifully. So there is, you can put in as much or as little as you want. I like anchovy. If I can get it out of the tube, that would be nice. Okay, that's good. Starting to smell fragrant. And then, we need to add the puttanesca part of this. Woo! That is hot, folks. That goes in. Mush that around, lower the heat a little bit. Now we're going to add our tomatoes. We add the tomatoes the olives, both the green and the black. And you see how this is starting to look really, really pretty. Now that goes in. Let me turn the heat up just a little bit. Now I'm going to stop and give that a little bit of sale, salt, and pepper. This is my favorite Friday night supper, spaghetti alla puttanesca. Pepper goes in. We want to add those capers. They go in. Cook everything down a little bit. I want to cover this so that it, those tomatoes really smoosh down. We need to add parsley, Italian flat leaf. Gorgeous. We need the zest of a lemon. I need my zester. So some lemon zest goes in. Mm. And that's just going to give another layer of flavor. I love lemon. I always say there's two things you should have in your refrigerator at all times. Lemons and a wedge of Parmigiano-Reggiano because you can work magic with both of those things. Okay, there is the zest. I'm gonna really mix that around well. Now these tomatoes have to collapse a bit. So I'm gonna raise the heat now to high. I got everything in, yes, except for the vino. And we wanna put some red wine in here. So. I would say a good half cup. That's a half a cup of vino. A really fast, fast sauce. Now we just need to cover that and in about 10, 12 minutes our sauce is ready. So then we need to cook the spaghetti. The water is now boiling for our pasta. We're using spaghetti and I'm going to put one of these salt tablets in. You can buy these. I got these when I was in Sicily or just use a tablespoon of salt. 
So in goes the uh, salt. And here we have our spaghetti. A half a pound will serve, believe it or not, four people. But if you want to serve eight, you can go ahead and, and put in the whole pound and the sauce will still be enough for that. So I'm going to put this in and get it below the water line. And we're going to let this cook until it is al dente, which means it's cooked through. There's no uncooked flour remaining in a strand of that spaghetti when I break it in half. So I'm going to put the top back on, let that come back to the boil, and watch it. Pasta is now cooked. I'm going to take about a quarter of a cup of that water, because that's starch, and put it right there in my sauce. Just mix that around with the sauce. You see how the sauce has now thickened. And it's, it's all ready to receive the pasta. So this is the way that you should enter pasta onto your sauce. You take it directly from the pot, see? And put it right in there, right in with the sauce. Mm. It's really, really is my favorite Friday night supper. Okay, that was a half a pound of pasta. Let's see if I got every little strand. There's the last one. So I'm going to turn that off now. And now I'm going to give this a quick stir with all these beautiful flavors in this sauce. The olives, the garlic, the anchovy, oh my goodness, the wine, oh, the capers, oh, the red pepper. I don't know. It looks like a hot dish to me. It's ready. And it's going right in here. Beautiful. Let's smooth that out a little bit. I really wish you were here. And here's a little Pecorino Romano over the top, carrying out that Southern Italian tradition. Wow. It's a hot dish for any day of the week. Today we made two classic recipes from Southern Italy. We started with la Genovese, has nothing to do with Genoa a sauce made with four pounds of onions, a pot roast, celery, carrot, a little bit of wine, and here it is, served as a second course, the meat all sliced with a little bit of the sauce over the top. And the first course is, of course, the ziti with the onion sauce. What a wonderful meal that makes. And then, one of my favorite Friday night specials, spaghetti a la puttanesca. It gets its kick from hot red pepper paste, but it has olives and garlic and tomatoes and parsley and wine, and it's perfect. And all it really needs is a little sprinkling of Pecorino Romano cheese over the top. And until I see you Nella Cucina again, I'm Mariana Spazito. Ciao! <laughs>